Hey everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is Monday, July 13th, 2020. I'm Barb Hammer. So tomorrow is Bastille Day. So that is the national holiday in France. And I think there's they're not gonna hold a military parade, maybe because of the coronavirus outbreak, I'm not sure. But uh, people are planning to be out on the streets. I don't know what's happened to the Yellow Vest movement. Um, um, that might have kind of petered out. I think that was getting mixed up. I think the coronavirus lockdowns were kind of uh, stopping that. And then there were Black Lives Matter um, um, protests in France over uh, a young man who died not even recently, but several years ago. So there were Black Lives Matter protests. So I think um, the Yellow Vest movement which was a very authentic grassroots movement um, has been diluted. I don't know what's going on there. I know that there were elements of more of AstroTurf protests uh, infiltrating. Um, that's the impression I've gotten. So anyway, I think people will be out on the streets um, of Paris along the Champs Elysees to protest. Um, people in the West are really not happy with what's going on with the coronavirus lockdowns and the um, economic misery that's being imposed on people. Uh, so along those lines, today I'd like to talk about um, cults, masks, and color revolutions. So I did a, re a video uh, recently about how my views about wearing masks has changed since this whole issue started. And um, I think the one thing I've forgot to mention in that video is like uh, people are given a false sense of security as though the mas masks are going to protect them well. Um, there is actual science that says, no, they don't protect people uh, from viruses. And the packaging on boxes specifically states that, and they will specify <laughs> the coronavirus in particular, that you will not be protected. And the mask can actually cause harm. And medical professionals have said, uh, respected medical professionals have said, that healthy people should not be wearing these masks. That, uh, and I, I knew my views started to change um, when I had to wear a mask just to get a haircut. And I realized it wasn't pleasant, it was hot and not as easy to breathe. And you're just not getting the fresh air and you're just kind of, you're inhaling um the carbon dioxide that you when you're breathing so you're just you're not getting enough oxygen i could tell it was not good so my mind <laughs> changed completely now i respect cultural practices in asia there's this uh tradition of wearing masks um but i think that was expanded from just wearing masks if you were sick and not i think it was to keep people from touching their mouth or nose i don't know um and then they kind of promoted that more you know out of fear of uh uh elderly catching the coronavirus because it the coronavirus is not a problem for healthy people younger people it's a problem for the elderly and the, they are the ones who are um suffering from the coronavirus so um Anyway, so I've taken a lot of unpopular positions and I get a lot of flack um, and I'm kind of caught in between uh, two sides. I feel culturally, um, <laughs> my, my channel, you know, I don't do this for money and YouTube's not a popularity contest. Um, I just do this, I'm retired, I just want to I get I got frustrated because people, supposedly alternative media people, were not not giving me the truth, and I wasn't learning anything from them. 
So I started down this path a couple of years ago. Um, so uh, <laughs> I've been told, you know, if you're not losing subs, you're not trying. So I guess I'm trying because my channel's been pretty stagnant in the last month. And it's, I know I have alienated people who um, don't, don't, don't like me criticizing supposedly pro-China figures like Daniel Dombrell and Nathan Rich. I know that's part of it. And I criticize them because they, they're sort of the business class. I realize there's a, a lot of Western um, men and it's men, Western men, and they're the business class. So they're all about, they seem like opportunists to me. So they go to China or they talk about China and, um, you know, they go to China and I made a joke about, uh, I thought I saw somebody on Twitter say something about, uh, Westerners, uh, just because, <laughs> just because you're with a Chinese woman doesn't make you an expert on China. And yeah, I kind of joke about just because you're diddling a Chinese woman doesn't make you an expert. And that's about right. So it's all these guys who are all about business. They've got business interests in China. And um, so I, I, I get, it makes me concerned because I know there are, for example, Max Blumenthal, the Gray Zone gang, Gray Zone outlet, um, he's kind of like in that business class, his family background, and he has business contacts. He seems to promote these uh, business people like uh, Daniel Dumbrell. And I, I'm, I'm suspicious because it seems like it's all about undermining the system in China, which is not neoliberalized. And these guys seem to be trying to make China more like the West. And that bothers me. And they don't really give you the whole truth. They feed their audiences a lot of disinformation. And that's, so that's not a popular position to take. People misunderstand. They think I'm anti-China. No, I'm not. So, um, you know, the, the anti-China channels, um, I don't really watch them because they're just too obvious to me. And the disinformation, uh, figures, they go at, tend to go after them. I, I, I will go, I think there's one channel, uh, I will talk about because I'm interested in connections to, um, money and the figures behind regime change. And there's one channel someone tipped me off about, so I will talk about that. Uh, so many things to talk about. I get overwhelmed, too many things going on and um, anyway, so another unpopular position I've taken is in, is about Turkey. So I did a video about Turkey's decision to turn the Hagia Sophia back into a mosque, which it was for centuries before it was turned into a museum and it, there was a court order and people are just dumping it. It's, I call it the, um, shit on turkey club it's the shit on turkey club so there are all these nasty stereotypes about turkey that are being trotted out and um you know i looked into the case and it's not a big deal it's really not uh <laughs> so it's much ado about nothing and it's about they're not respecting not respecting um turkey's national sovereignty you know, that's their business, what they do with the Hagia Sophia. It's a popular tourist attraction. It still will be. They're just going to hold services there. But apparently, um, you know, <laughs> Muslims are not allowed to do that, you know, with it. You know, it still has all the Christian icons and um, mosaics and those will remain. It's just they're going to hold services there. Um, What's the problem with that? So uh, it is now the Hagia Sophia is now called the Grand Mosque of um, Hagia Sophia. Yeah, Grand Mosque of Hagia Sophia. And centuries ago, it used to be, I think, the Saint Sophia Cathedral.
but it's a mosque and it's being it's being used again as a mosque. Um, so that's not popular. It's not a popular position. So the issue is about respecting the sovereignty uh, and traditions of another country. So I've also noticed that, you know, Westerners like to preach to Chinese and others about how they should conduct business, how they should handle their affairs, what they should do. <coughs> but it works both ways. So a lot of Chinese have been shaming people in the West for objecting to the masks and they don't realize what's being done with the lockdowns, how draconian they are. They're not, they're not, I mean, they took things seriously in China. They had strict quarantines, but it wasn't this uh, perpetual lockdown and constant, you know, reopening and then, you know, re reopening is a thing. And then we had to lock it down again. So I've had to have, have this discussion with Chinese and say, listen, you know, respect works both ways. So you have to respect people and their views about the masks and stop shaming them over inflated numbers and over hysteria, corporate hysteria that's uh, taking place in the West. So I get caught in the middle and my positions are not popular. So I pay the price. It's just online, big deal doesn't really affect me personally. It's just, you know, online. <laughs> so I'm apparently now I'm a Turkish troll. I've been called a woo Mao. And even the disinfo has SS, they think that I'm anti China, you know, so uh, there's been a there was, there's been a smear campaign against me. I noticed some of the supposedly pro China business class figures in social media are blocking me you know, uh, smearing me it's, and it's very sexist and ageist, disgusting stuff. Very disturbing. Anyway, I take unpopular positions, but that's the way it is. I'm doing the right thing. So I'm not, you know, I'm respecting Turkey's decision about the Hagia Sophia um, or Hagia Sophia. Uh, Hagia Sophia is both Greek and Turkish, it turns out. Um, and I don't pass judgment on how China handled the coronavirus outbreak. They were the first country to detect it, identify it, and report it. And um, that was their business. They handled that how they deemed they thought it was how they they thought it was necessary to deal with it. And the public there supported what the what the the Beijing government did. So I'm not. That's their business. That's their business. I'm not passing judgment on the 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 mask wearing there or anything that's that's their business i'm just um saying that there are different perspectives about masks and all this but anyway i talked about so yeah on youtube there's a lot of censorship now I, I, my channel's not that big so i don't know i don't know that i'm in danger i think they're going after channels that are a little bit bigger i have had one or two videos removed one I put on um, one, this this one was from March on my YouTube channel and YouTube just removed it. I appealed it. Now they didn't give me a strike. I was lucky about that. They're giving strikes to people who appeal these removals. Um, so no strike, they just removed it. I appeal, but no strike. They, yeah, they denied the appeal. So it was this, um, USA's Operation Gladio C for COVID-19 false flag attack and war on us all. And that's how I saw it then. And I was very suspicious about the virus and um, I had looked into it and it seemed like uh, the outbreak started probably in the US and that's where the virus came from and had been circulating for a while in North America. And it seems like it was circulating for a while last year in Europe too. Um, so I made this video, it is, this is um, the COVID, the COVID hysteria, the corporate lockdowns and really just awful things economically they're doing to people emotionally, socially. It's about, it's a neoliberal regime change operation and it's a color revolution it's turned out. You know, we're, there are two psychological operations going on in the, the big one, the big one is the COVID um, or the Rona, the Rona hysteria. Um, 
And um, yeah, I mean, I could tell because I've been studying, I was studying last year after watching Hong Kong, I started looking to color revolutions and I started seeing the signs of a color revolution and the uh, coronavirus, uh, the COVID hysteria and what they were doing. And in the music videos, the music videos um, is ridiculous things with doctors and nurses dancing around and um, uh, the casserolazo say they're applauding, applauding the medical professionals at the end of the day, banging on pots and pans, which is casserolazo. And that's a sign of a color revolution. It goes back to when um, Salvador Allende was overthrown in Chile. That was the first, I guess that was the first neoliberal regime change operation, I guess. Um, yeah, so it was, you know, I could tell it was like a war of terror, a war of terror, not a war on terror, a war of terror against us. And the false flag attack is, um, yeah, blaming China, blaming China when the virus likely came from the U.S. Um, yeah, so color revolutions, some masks um, and color revolution. Oh, the other thing, cults. Okay, cults. Um, let's see, what am I looking for here? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, this is where it was. So these um, regime change operations, uh, Western intelligence, CIA, they like to use cults because it's easy to control people. So the COVID thing is like a cult too. The COVID hysteria is like a cult. And it's like a death cult, I guess, yeah. The other thing about the COVID outbreak is there were a lot of scenes of like uh, dead bodies or body bags, that sort of thing. And that's a sign of a color revolution too, I realized. So this is the, uh, this is the Lady Liberty Hong Kong statue that was, um, constructed last year in Hong Kong. And um, so you can see the mask. Yeah, so a lot of the protesters, protesters, rioters, terrorists, they're CIA, MI6, NGO terrorists, as I explain here. Um, they were wearing, often wearing gas masks. And um, if they weren't wearing gas masks, they were wearing, they were hiding their, concealing their faces so they couldn't be identified. So this was another color revolution um, where wearing a mask was part of the operation, wearing a mask. Um, but I realized um, today, so Scott Creighton on his Church Dog 42 channel, um, in, on his video today, he included the unveiling of this statue in Latvia. Um, and it's of a medical professional, a nurse, I guess, or not, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tribute to frontline workers. So it could be a doctor or nurse or other medical worker uh, wearing a mask. And I think I've got this. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. So that's the statue. And people were laughing at the unveiling. <laughs> the unveiling, nobody's wearing a mask. At the unveiling, no one was wearing a mask. And here's people visiting, no masks. No masks. This is the unveiling, no masks. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, but the style of the statue reminded me very much of this one. No, I don't know. I mean, I'm not an artist, but to my eye, like something about this reminds me very much of this. I don't know why. So if you want to comment about that, if you think, if you agree with me or you don't agree with me and any artists who want to look at that, I should have asked my husband. Yeah, damn it. I forgot to ask him what he thought. Maybe he did look at it and can't remember. I think he agreed. Can't remember. Can't remember if I asked him. Um, 
Yeah, I think he agrees with me. I think I think we kind of briefly discussed that. So the similarity and the mask, that's what struck me. And this is something that's crossed my mind about the masks, that this was an issue last year in Hong Kong. Um, so there are mask laws or mask mandates or rules, strict rules in the West about wearing masks, and they don't make any sense at all make none. <laughs> Whereas in, in China and Asia, that they kind of made sense, you know, it's okay. I'm not into the mask. I really, I guess if I were in Asia, I would kind of go long because I'm, you know, I respect local customs or whatever. But if I don't have to wear a mask, I'm not wearing a mask. And I already talked about, <laughs> I'm going to wear my kofia if I, somewhere for some reason I have to wear a mask. So this was a court case last year. So the mask situation in Hong Kong was so bad that the the Hong Kong government they had to impose a, like an emergent, emergency and they invoked an emergency measure that um, um, said you could not wear masks uh, at these riots, these uh, protests. These uh, yeah, they they were the protest uh, people had so in Hong Kong they would have to get permission for a large protest from the local police and local police would not grant it if it was an organization that they knew there's been trouble. So they would say no. So if people went ahead and held the protest and they were wearing masks, um, that was breaking the, the mask law, the mask ban. So the terrorists in Hong Kong, they did not like this mask ban. So they challenged it and, um, they defied it. And so they were going around wearing masks. That's Carrie Lam. So they would mock um, the chief executive of Hong Kong, the Hong Kong government, or they'd wear a um, Xi Jinping mask or the um, Guy Fawkes mask. Um, and so that was how they kind of rebelled against the mask man. Um, so it's a court case and it's come up, it's been appealed. Um, there was a ruling in April and they said, yeah, it was, the ban was legal, uh, provided it was, it was just against, um, uh, illegal assemblies, these, uh, these riots. Um, uh, but it's being appealed. So the terrorists are not happy with us or they're appealing. It's going to going to another court on appeal. Um, so that's the thing, the, there, there was a law uh, prohibiting the wearing of masks um, at these riots. Um, so the mask in Hong Kong was all about their color, color revolution. Well, the COVID color revolution, the Rona color revolution is about wearing a mask. So there's the parallel there masks and color revolution. So, and it's all very cult-like. Yeah, it's cult-like. So the Hong Kong terrorists, kind of like a cult, it was like a death cult too. So they were, they were like writing their wills. Um, it just got ridiculous. It was becoming a death cult. So in the, in the COVID and the Rona color revolution is like a death cult. So there's this obsession with death and the exaggeration of death and the images of body bags. Um, and it's being used also against certain governments. So in Nicaragua, I know they haven't had these lockdowns or rules about masks. They haven't shut down the economy, haven't closed the borders. They haven't done any of that and people are fine. So they've had cases, they've had deaths, but it's, it hasn't been a problem. Um, I know it was used against Turkey too early on because they were suspicious that there were no cases in Turkey. Um, now there, there are now, but at first there weren't. So it was a problem in Iran. Iran was hit hard. Um, and um, they were, there was a lot of smearing of Turkey and saying, oh, they're lying. They're lying just like China, just like the propagandists were saying about China, that China was lying about its figures. So they were doing the same thing to Turkey. And I had seen, well, the reason it wasn't, there was no outbreak yet in Turkey is um, one of the reasons was that they have a custom in Turkey. When you go anywhere to someone's home or whatever, they have this um, 
hand sanitizer or something. It's just a special product. I forget what it was. And they explained that people in Turkey are very, um, very hygienic. So they're, you know, they keep their hands clean. And so the virus was not a problem. Um, and so Turkey was being shamed and Tur Turkey is a targeted country. And, and when I defend Turkey, I get all kinds of crap from people who just trot out all the stereotypes and say, oh, it's a NATO member. So it's, it's, a uh, you know, it's in cahoots with the U.S. in regime change operation. I'm going, no, it's not. And in Turkey, Turkey's actually fighting the U.S., uh, the CIA uh, puppet there, Haftar. And that's not popular. So Turkey's doing a lot of things. It's It's got closer relations with Russia and China. So that's not, it's not popular right now. And there was a coup attempt in 2016 and people... They just are, they are brainwashed with these uh, stereotypes about the evil Turks, the evil Turks. And anyway, so Turkey was another country that was being shamed about this um, uh, Rona, <laughs> coronavirus outbreak. Um, what else here? Anyway, so I think, um, yeah. So it's all about, yeah, so here's some images of the masks in Hong Kong. And uh, the masks were actually, so the uh, terrorists were trying to hide their identity. And the pl problem was uh, for the police in Hong Kong, they were being doxxed, they were being identified, and they and their families were being harassed and targeted for violence and all kinds of bad stuff. The children in school were being harassed. Um, yeah, the, the children of police. So the police had to start wearing masks to protect themselves. So that is, you know, for them, they they had to wear masks to protect their identities. Um, so just the opposite. So everything's kind of reversed in Hong Kong and China than in the West, I realized. Uh, like the new national security law in Hong Kong is about protecting people, protecting the sovereignty of China. And um, the national security and national security laws in the West are about terrorizing people. Um, yeah, so very different situations. So that was this. Uh, uh, yeah, when the uh, when the uh, mask ban was invoked, imposed in Hong Kong. Um, another ridiculous thing is uh, one of the things, the young women were claiming, oh, if we say we're converting to Islam, we can wear, um, we can wear veils or niqab. <laughs> so there was that. I have a funny image here. I think I've got it up here. Yeah. <laughs> so some of them were taking their hair. They were actually doing and wrapping it around their faces. Yeah, so this is what they did last year when there was a mask ban to get around the mask ban. They were doing that, believe it or not. Yes, yes, they did that. Ridiculous stuff. Yeah, so that's the mask ban. What else? Oh, yeah, so, um, yeah, there's another statue. Oh, I should, um, I think I want to do something about um, art, propaganda art, because there's it's very interesting, all the propaganda art. So there was also, as far as a statue, like I showed you the Lady Liberty Hong Kong and that ridiculous coronavirus statue in um, Latvia. So there was also, I remember earlier this year, um, there is this statue, the pillar, was the pillar of shame? I think it's called, yeah, the pillar of shame. So I think it's a copy. So this artist in, um, Copenhagen. Yeah, this is at the parliament building in uh, the Danish parliament building in Copenhagen. So he built this pillar of shame and it's about the Tiananmen Square, um, event color revolution is what it was so it's like oh look at all the dead people all the people who were killed and he added some hong kong touches so he's got the helmets i think they're 
Um, yeah, I think he even had tanks, and I think it was a collaboration with a Chinese artist, um, from what I remember. And so I think at the base there were like tanks, you know, so invoking the image of the tanks at Tiananmen Square, and actually uh, some of the military vehicles were hijacked by the protesters. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's images on that pillar of shame of uh, face. Oh yeah, here's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he added some of these images from Hong Kong. So this is one of the terrorists wearing goggles and a helmet. The yellow is usually a yellow, yellow helmet. And it seems like a lot of these cults, they use the color yellow. So it was the color yellow of the Hong Kong protests for the helmets. Color yellow is also MEK, the um, the, the, the anti-Iranian cult that the Western intelligence uses in Israel too, yellow. Um, yellow comes up a lot. Falun Gong, um, their color scheme is yellow too. So it's interesting, it's often yellow. So a lot of propaganda art. So anyway, masks and cults and color revolution. So that's the theme. Um, what else? Yeah, so there's that. What else? Um, I think I've got everything. Oh yeah, so here's the Lady Liberty Hong Kong about it. So this is another image of it. Before they, they took it up to this mountain that overlooks Hong Kong, and this is a 3D, yeah, <laughs> rotating 3D image of it on oh, the umbrella. See the umbrella. Okay, that's the other thing. So right now, there's also another color revolution. Is the Black Lives Matter color revolution, and you'll see people dancing, people dancing with the police even at these uh, Black Lives Matter um protest so you know if you look at the who's behind black lives matter it's it's definitely a color revolution it's got a lot of corporate backing including george soros <laughs> he's always in there he's always got his fingers in there um so black lives matter yeah that's another color revolution we're saying so it's like we got two psychological operations um the rona rona color revolution um and oh okay so yeah uh, all these corporate groups back each other up so i noticed this this um activist at some factory tear gas factory it's only 10 people um so uh extinction rebellion i wasn't familiar with these other groups global justice rebellion which is just an extension of extinction rebellion i looked it up Women of Color Global Women's Strike is also another climate change organizations connected. So they're all connected, but it was only 10 people. Only <laughs> 10 people. Oh, yeah. So it was in solidarity with um, the Hong Kong terrorists um, where tear gas is used against them. It's also in solidarity with, I guess, the Black Lives Matter protests in the U.S. So there's the umbrellas. Like um, I started seeing the umbrellas in the U.S. at the Black Lives Matter protests. Um, and, and uh, um, yeah, umbrellas and um, masks and the wearing of black. That was another thing I started seeing. Um, so it's just 10 protesters. Yeah, 10. And they're wearing their masks. Yeah, they're wearing their masks. Look at that. Dutifully wearing their masks because it's all about conforming. Well, they aren't. Not everybody is. He is. Anyway, it's just 10 protesters, but all these corporate, these are all corporate groups. Um, something that's really disgusting is, um, so Danny Haifong, I know about Danny Haifong. So he's with Black Agenda Report and Black Agenda Report is not what it was two years ago. So Danny Haifong just wrote this disgusting piece and he's, he's calling anybody who questions um, the, the lockdowns and the whole coronavirus, um, psychological operation, um, hysteria, he's calling them white supremacists and libertarian. So I'm a white supremacist libertarian and I get this a lot. I'm getting this, I've been getting this actually for a while that I'm 
a white racist <laughs> for having a dissenting opinion. If I criticize someone who's a minority, um, yeah, I'm a racist. You know, I'm not criticizing them because of their race or being racist. I'm just criticizing them. But that's not allowed if you're white. Okay. So Danny Haifong is all about identity politics. And identity politics is merely a uh, left cover for a corporate centrist or right-wing agenda, a business agenda. So that's Danny Haifong. And he likes to act, I call him a faux red. So he likes to dress himself up as a communist or a socialist, and he's not. Um, you know, he's got very conventional kind of views, um, just dressed up as radical, but they're basically sort of DNC light, really. Um, so this is a disgusting smear piece. Calling someone like me <laughs> um, a white supremacist libertarian. And I believe in government, good government, like they have in uh, countries like China and Nicaragua and Cuba and Venezuela. Yeah. Um, you know, strong sovereign governments. Yeah, I'm all on board with that, but I'm not on board with this uh, corporate, <laughs> the, the oligarchy that's running governments in the West, these um, neoliberalized governments, you know, for private interests, big business interests. Um, so he's just, this is just a smear piece. So not only that, so if you question the coronavirus hysteria and the wearing of masks and all, and the lockdowns, you're a white supremacist libertarian. The other thing is he says, he's gaslighting and saying you're crazy if you think that the Black Lives Matter uh, protests are a color revolution. Well, you know, it's got all the science, it's got the, it's got the money, the backing, corporate backing, and, but that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so he, he's also claiming that we blame China. Well, I don't blame China. There are some people who blame China. Well, I don't blame China. I do blame people like Bill Gates, for sure, and other corporate hacks. Um, so Danny Haifong, I'm going to talk about Danny Haifong because he's a real problem. And he's he's gotten very upset with me on Twitter before. We've had exchanges. And um, he doesn't like it when I point out the disinformation that he and others promote. And I suspect he's he, he is clearly connected to Max Blumenthal's Gray Zone group because he's appeared with them. And um, yeah, he they cross promote. So Black Agenda Report, it's really a shame what's happened. And Danny Haifong is just disgusting. He says some good stuff. He, as, <laughs> you know, he complains that he uh, has slave wages um, but he was given a free tour of China by some big backer in Hong Kong and Cynthia McKinney went along and she still smears China. And Danny Haifong, you know, he says some good, some interesting things about China, but um, overall what's going on in the West. So he thinks it's ridiculous. He's one of these people who thinks it's ridiculous. We don't have color revolutions in the West. Oh, yes, we do. So I always say the chickens have come home to roost. I've seen the signs. I know a color revolution one. If it if it looks like a duck, and walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So we're seeing two color revolution psychological op psychological operations right now in the West: uh, the coronavirus lockdowns, and um, then forcing people to wear masks, um, and the Black Lives Matter, the race baiting. So you know. Danny Haifong, his type, he's a race baiter. So he's a race baiter. He will, he will just shame me just for being white, just for being white. And he's half white. His mother's Asian. And I, I'm wondering about his name. That's not, he said his, his father was German, Irish German, but Haifong is not an Irish German name unless someone can explain that one to me. So I wonder if he didn't take his mother's name. I don't know. So, you know, I don't know. This is a disgusting piece. Really disgusting that this is coming from Black Agenda Report. So anyway, I guess that's about it. So this is all about cults, masks, and color revolutions.
and you know the art propaganda art there's a lot of interesting propaganda art and you know the laws so the laws in china and hong kong are to protect people protect national sovereignty against these terrorists uh, these terrorist color revolutions and um but the laws uh in the west are to terrorize people so completely different situations but people in the west don't understand what's going on in Asia and they pass judgment. And likewise in Asia, they pass judgment to judgment on the West and they don't understand that the, there's a different agenda in the West with this uh, coronavirus, this coronavirus outbreak. So in, in China, they're not, you know, they had strict quarantines for a while, but they opened things up and, you know, they're not, they weren't planning this eternal lockdown like in the west and um in the west part of the agenda is uh uh forcing everybody to take a a big a big pharma toxic big pharma vaccine you know for a virus that is virtually harmless for most people so very different agendas anyway cults mass and color revolutions i guess that's it for now anyway thanks for your patience and i will talk to you again soon okay bye